Well, Francis was living with some friends of mine and they were having a party at their place. Fair enough, no worries. Um, and I came along, fantastic. Francis met me, saw me and immediately fell in love. Um, and she was just so um, gobsmacked by this stunning man that she saw before her that she didn't know what to do with herself. So she, she went away thinking that I was a massive jerk when she really just didn't know how to handle her deep, deep love for me. The real side of the story of how we met was in 2015, I was living in the share house in the girls' new dom. They're having a housewarming party. This is true. Dom came over. I like meeting people. I love people. But Dom is the only person I've ever met in my life where I was like, if I never speak to this guy again, I'll be a happy girl. And so I left this party happening at my own house, went to a different party that night, and was hoping I'd never see Dom again. She was gobsmacked. She was in love with me. I knew it. Um, and yeah, uh, long and the short of it was... Um, you did um, I did a you, Yeah, I did mission in Perth and then came back to Sydney. And um, we reconnected at a conference and I offered to help Frances out with some of the work that she was doing. Um, and she said, that's great. And it so, was great timing because we just had some guys drop out who were helping us with a boys presentation. And so I went to my fellow missionary and said, great job. Like we actually like praise be to God. We have a speaking partner for you. And she said, who is it? I said, Dom. And she said, no, I refuse to work with him. He's too arrogant. And so that <laughs> meant that I had to do the preparations with Dom. And over the course of this... She fell in love with me again. I realized he wasn't as big a jerk. There was no fireworks and pretty things. But, you know, it was... But, I realized yeah, you weren't a jerk. Yeah, but what, what, the, the essence of it was, well, we just got to know each other. We just got to know each other while working together um, over this project. Um, that's just a great way to phrase it, I think. Very universal. I think you can use that in anything. Um, but we did, we did, we got to, yeah, we got to know each other. And that was, yeah, we just wanted to get to know each other more. Um, so. That was 2017. Yeah. And then after a couple of months, Dom called up. And said, um, I'd like to get to know you better. Would you like to do a mutually enjoyable activity? Um, to which Francis replied, yes. I said, well, I may be romantically interested in you. And yeah, she looked that pretty well, so. I think what really, I really appreciate about Dom was um, his virtue, his selflessness, the fact that he really meant what he said uh, and that he treated everyone with a great deal of respect. And it wasn't just uh, me, but it was like a lot of my female friends as well. He showed a lot of genuine care and concern for. And I think that's what started to attract me to Dom was his selflessness. Um, but the very special thing about Frances was that she actually challenged me to be a better man. She really challenged me to be the best man I could be. And she, she drew me towards holiness. Um, she wasn't just nice and uh, that was great. She was happy with where I was in my heart. No, she actually drew me towards um, holiness and she drew me towards being better. Um, and, you know, like she's still doing that. There's a long way uh, for us both to go on that journey. But she, um, yeah, Francis really drew me towards being better. And that's what attracted me so much about it. Uh, and, and it's what still does. So thank you, Francis. I am impressed by your patience and your forgiveness. Um, from the perspective of a married man, like, you know, in terms of like being married, I'm very impressed that we are still married and I'm very impressed that you um, have been as patient as you are with me. Um, in terms of dating, from a dating perspective, which is probably what this um, resource is more aimed at, um, what impressed me about you? Yeah, again, it was, it was really that, you know, obviously what drew me to you was your authenticity. And I would say your authenticity um, and your gentleness really impressed me. You know, dealing with my family, your family, you know, life in general, your your gentleness very much impresses me in the face of whatever it need, whatever it is. So, yeah. Thanks. Great work, Francis. For context, we've been married um, for two years. Uh, and as Dom said on our wedding anniversary, why are you counting? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
it was we we hadn't been seeing each other for very long. No, it's very um, early days. Yeah, only a couple of weeks. But we grabbed a coffee. Yeah, we grabbed a coffee. Around and, the local park. Well, even even before that. Was it before that? No, no. That's the best well, that time was, I remember. No, no, you're right. Very that simply. was it. Yeah. We grabbed it. We grabbed a coffee. Yeah, it just came to mind. It was shocking. That. We grabbed a coffee. We we're hanging out in the park. You yeah. sipping your coffee, yeah. and the dom and, just says, and "I said, Francis, if we're gonna get married, it won't be for a couple of years. Um, I want to finish my uni first, uh, and I think it's something that I need to do. Um, lo and behold, we didn't. It actually didn't take us very long to get married at all. But um, yeah, the conversation was, look, hey." Um, I'm not here to waste your time. I know you're not here to waste my time. We both we both know that this is either going to end in marriage or it's going to end. So we, you know, so let's, you know, let's let's have it in the discussion and like realistically, this is my time frame. Um, and this is what we're looking at. So that was that was how it began, I should say. It wasn't quite as like Protractual that language. It no, was, it wasn't. It wasn't was no. It? Like we're having a coffee, yeah, and then you coffee said, and said, Francis, I don't want to get married with you until I, I don't want to marry you until I finish uni. Yeah. Um, does that work for you, kind of thing? Like, yeah. yeah. That was really. Yes. It was but, kind of like, well, will you wait for me to finish uni? That was that, kind that of. That was that really was it. Yeah. Will oh, you geez. wait for me to finish uni? That's yeah. true. Mm, we oh, were super blessed. We were absolutely we were very blessed. Very blessed. We had a priest, a couple, um, as well as a really great resource that's similar to Smart Loving. Um, yeah, that was very, very similar. Yeah. Uh, but it was really great to have, I thought we had a very well-rounded um, perspectives going into it, being able to meet with this couple on a regular basis for several months, uh, as well as having a really great priest um, to help walk us through it as well. So yeah. we had a lot of support. I'd say all of the above. Um, both our families, our friends, um, people who knew both of us as well as us as individuals. Um, there's one moment that stands out in particular. I was talking to uh, my friends after I had, like, Dom had done something stupid. I was really mad at him. As, as you I can't even remember what he did. I was trying to remember for this conversation. I was like, yeah, I can't remember what he did. Um, and at this point, my friend said, I think you're ready to get married. You should marry Dom. And I was so furious with him. I was like, how dare you say that now? And she explained, well, look, you're not in la-la land anymore. Like, you're seeing, like, you're seeing things for how they really are. You both have faults. You know, now, you know, like, now you get married. And that just really shocked me because at all points during my conversations with this friend, I was like, at that point would have been the last point I was expecting, great guy, get married. <laughs> um, I guess an inspiration for, for our choice from my perspective was my parents. Uh, my parents, they met um and they got engaged three months later and they got married three months later later after their engagement um and all at the tender age of 20 um my father was asked to help fix the headlight of a young lady's motorcycle in the parish by the time he got round to her house she'd actually fixed the headlight herself and he figured that any woman who can fix a headlight is worth marrying so that's what he did um and for me i was just inspired um, I was inspired by their commit. Like I am still inspired by their commitment to each other. They drive each other absolutely mental. I am absolutely amazed um, by by them both. But they just they are so committed and so loving to each other, um, and have always been as far as I can remember. And so for me, that was an inspiration for me, in terms of well, I want that. I want that in my life. Um, and so that was, yeah, they, they were a real inspiration. I think we're very blessed um, to share a few really important things. I think you can cut that bit out, to be honest, because that's <laughs> like a meaningless, yeah, whatever. Um, but I would say one great blessing um, has been the vision and the faith that we share. Um, I think I take it for granted too often that we actually share, uh, a, you know, a vision both of our lives, but also a vision for the kingdom of heaven, um, you know, as, as Jesus is leading us to it. Um, and I think it was amazing. I think just to illustrate the point in, in our marriage prep, um, the, the guy talked about, uh, 
you know, like if you're a couple and you've got a vision to hear, you've got your kids, this is the point where your kids are through school and they've left home. You will work towards that vision. And then when you reach that, you will start moving away from each other. If he says, you've got a vision that you're going to retire comfortably. Okay. You're going to work towards that vision and then you start moving away from each other. Um, you know, and if you're married, like if you're a couple that has a vi- that's waiting um, until you get married to have sex and you have a vision of having sex on your wedding night, then after that, you're going to go start moving away from each other in your vision. So he said the really important thing is to have a vision, not just for here and now, not just for one year, five years, 10 years time, but to have a vision that goes to heaven so that you can get to heaven together. And that's the important thing. Um, and I think that's something that I'm very, very grateful for that perhaps I take for granted um, a bit too often. So that's that's a real blessing is that we share the same vision and faith. Um, there's, there's other blessings that we've been blessed with in our married life. Um, but in terms of intra relationship, I would say that's probably the foremost one. What do you reckon, love? Anything else? This might sound a bit basic and maybe... Um... That's all right. <laughs> at the forefront but I think what I'm still um, really surprised and very thankful for is just the gift of each other like just the gift of Dom to be like wow this human being um, I get to do life with every day and I think that that's just a huge blessing to be entrusted to love someone in such a particular unique way uh, <laughs> so I love fishing I absolutely love fishing and for our honeymoon, one of my favorite activities was going fishing with Francis in the snowy mountains in the rain. It was wonderful for me. The biggest issue um, of, I think the, the biggest challenge so far in our marriage has been learning to love the other person in the way the other person needs to be loved. Um, it's about learning to actually love the other person and not just not just loving your image of the other person as well Uh, and so that's that's been perhaps the biggest challenge but i think that you know i i really i like to think that we've made um, some great headway on that one can you think of a funny story about that Um, other than the fishing and it goes both ways like it does (laughs) i'll try and love dom the way that i want to be loved like this is like the perfect thing um to be honest i can think of Moistness instances of yours. But I remember one time Dom's like, I've got the perfect date night planned. We'll like eat beer, sorry, drink beer and eat drink chips. Drink beer and eat chips. Um, amazing. And like maybe we can go fishing as well. Would you love that, sweetie? I'm like, oh, <laughs> I think you want to do that. Yeah. Uh, so a bit of a back and forth. There was a lot of contention about things that we um, cared about when we first got married. So every like three days, Dom uh, would vacuum the floors. And I never thought the floors got that dirty. But Dom would never look at the bathroom. Like, the, and so I was always cleaning Francis the bathroom. Francis was furious. She was always every, cleaning the bathroom. Every weekend, it was always said, me cleaning Dom, the bathroom. Dom, why don't you ever help me with the bathroom? And I said, Francis, why don't you ever help me with the floors? And what um, we realised was, was we that... We should just care about different things. <laughs> um, so if the floor's dirty, Dom really, it gets on him. Doesn't really, I don't notice it, to be honest with you guys. Uh, but if the bathroom's dirty, I super notice that. So we've now learnt that yeah. we have different thresholds yeah. of care about different things. Perhaps a better sound bite or perhaps a more accurate thing is uh, we have different needs um, sure. and it's about uh, learning to understand the needs of the other even when they're different to your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the like the bathroom versus the floors. Yeah. True. Um, so, you know, naturally marriage is a vocation. Um, it's something that once called to it's not um, it's not just a career opportunity it's not um, it's not a preference it's a vocation and for us um, like we we're talking about earlier with with vision um, marriage calls us to holiness and our faith is the rudder that steers you know that steers us as we move towards that calling um, yeah I think I think that's the that, that would, for me, be the most simple way of putting it. Um, it's the community that we have um, encountered and we've been blessed with. Um, and I'd hope that we'd 
be a part of. It's the way that we, um, re- the way that we together relate with other people is very different to the way that one relates to others um, as, as a single person. Um, because it's very much, you're in it for life. It's an us unit. And it's not as if other people can have a friendship with me and then be horrible for Francis or anything like that. I guess it's, we really are a family unit in the community. And I didn't, I didn't, ex- I didn't expect that aspect in particular um, as part of going into our marriage, but it's a real, it's, it's a great blessing that we've encountered along the way. That's from me. We still have individual friends, just to clarify. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> you know, but it's it's not the same. Yeah, no, it is It is different. I think something that I wasn't expecting um, going into marriage, which has been a beautiful blessing, is just how healing marriage is, um, to being loved day in and day out um, through all my faults and failings uh, and to still be loved and to be known so deeply and just how healing that is. That just really took me by surprise, you know, when it comes to the healing power of the sacrament of marriage. Like you know, I always thought, yep, you know, confessions, healing, reconciliation, that's great. But the healing through marriage was something that I didn't um, expect. And it's been a really beautiful blessing. I remember at one of my friend's wedding, you know, she just had like the dance with her father and I was speaking to her father afterwards after the bride and groom had left. And he was giving me some marriage advice. And this is when I just started dating Dom. And he said, what you want is you want a man who loves Jesus and is seeking virtue. Because if he loves Jesus and he seeks virtue, he will try to love you well every day. Um, And you'll always come back to that vision um, of each other and that unity um, through Jesus. And so I thought, that's really simple advice. Find someone that loves Jesus and has virtue. And look, it's worked out well for me so far. (laughs) I think she got it.